Okay, listen. I said it wasn't really a good idea to go and buy the bulk SMD parts reels. But the same guy was selling some stuff that I did want. And since you get combined shipping, I kind of went ahead and got another batch of stuff from him. So this is the thing I actually wanted, which is just a security camera. It's made by Bosch. And this is the LTC0435 slash 20. And it's just basic color camera. It's got a manual zoom and manual focus lens on it. And it, you know, wasn't too much money. It was like 10 bucks or something. And this just runs off uh, 12 volts DC or I believe 50, oh no, 24 volts AC. And it has a BNC video out. And I was powering it just using some bare wires plugged into its little socket at the back. Worked very well. Let me see if I can unplug this using itself. Nope. Oh well. Uh, yeah, so this is just basically a security camera. It's color. And I thought it was completely automated until I realized that this side panel opens and it has a little menu system. So I was able to change a couple settings. It has a little locking mechanism. This actually moves the CCD forward and back. It lets you change the focal distance and it gives you uh, basically control over its uh, focus range because uh, it, the lens itself is now focusing on a different part of the lens and I believe you ideally line it up so that you have no uh, darkened corners or anything like that although I'm not too familiar with this particular lens mount. The lens it came with is a 1 3rd inch uh, 2.8 millimeter to 10 millimeter zoom lens f1.4 <laughs> I don't know why I mean this gives you an idea of the state the world is in I mean why is it one third of an inch with 2.8 millimeter focal distance <laughs> and then another fraction for the uh, uh, f-stop Ugh. oh well but it just uses a standard I, I believe this is actually a standard I've seen this on other security cameras I was a security guard for a few years and this is a standard iris connector with this like four pin square connector. No, it's not a ridiculously expensive uh, Limo connector. Those are round and much, much higher quality. But this is what I really wanted to get. And the entire reason why I bid on it is because I saw other stuff that I thought would be cool at the same time. I love how their actual internal packaging has the Intel Intel Bunny People logo on it. But this should be some Itanium chips. Now I have never seen an Itanium chip in person. I think they're all going to spill out when I open this up, but I don't care. Okay, so that was actually very heavy. So this is very cool. This is the these are CPU modules. Obviously, they're not bare dies. I saw some pictures of uh, what it should look like. This one wasn't opened, from what I could tell. Although they might have. Re no, it looks like it wasn't opened. Anyway, uh, these are Itanium chips. Now, Itanium is a failed CPU from Intel. They decided to go 64-bit using their own code, or sorry, their own instruction set, which was not compatible with the x86 that we know and love, or hate. And basically it completely failed, although it does still technically exist. No one really uses it. I think it's in some HP servers. I can't remember who actually uses it. It might be just HP. So this is just a moderately dense packing container and these are heavy whoa yep these are pretty heavy so this is the socket hmm strange design this is this the connectors are on a second PCB and there's an Atmel chip here oh that's um these look like EEPROM or EEPROM small fuse 
And there's some security bits here. A lot of security bits holding on the top plate. Well, let me see if I can get these off. I don't know if I have a security driver this small, but let me take a look. This module is proving to essentially be impenetrable. <laughs> I started taking off the bits at the top. Now these are not actually Torx bits or pentalobe bits, which are similar, but they're rounded on the ends. And I couldn't actually take off most of them, even though my Torx bit was actually getting rid of most of them. I was able to drill out a couple more and actually get all these off. Now I can't seem to get this off so I'm thinking this is screwed in from the bottom and I was able to get this clamp off which goes like this holding the heat sink down to the CPU like these are meant to be attached to you know either a chassis with a fan or something these are the first generation 733 megahertz models I believe and I've also snapped off this to try and get into it yes this one is sacrificial I just want to get into it to see what it looks like and it's proving difficult like this is this board is very firmly attached I tried drilling these out and these don't drill out these must be like hardened steel or something. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll try a different bit, a larger one, and see if I can get through. But I can see that there's a metal plate. Oh, there's something in there too. Like a pip. Is this like... Oh, okay, wait, hang on. There's... It's coming through here. Maybe if I bend that in. Well, that's better. I don't know why the other end's being held in place. Unless it's just a lot of um, heat sink compound. You'd be surprised how much that stuff can hold when it's uh, like the the paste, sorry not the paste, the um, glue type. It's, you can think it's like actually part of the freaking chip, but it's really just glued on. So it looks like this end is being held in probably probably by another pip. I can see the CPU. I just don't know how to get to this part. Let me try taking it, well let me try drilling out these screws again. Well, hopefully that ends today's tool abuse, but it did get it off, so let's see. My cat is trying to jump into the box that this stuff came in. He is in the box this stuff came in. Moose, you like the shipping containers? Moose. Hey, up here. Hey, fat cat. You coming out of there? Oh, you too? Uh, boxes. Cats. What are you going to do? Okay, enough cats. Let's see if we can get any further into this. It does feel a little looser. I mean, all I did was take the heads off those screws. They didn't really do much. I'm thinking those screws were just literally just holding this on, so I don't think that really helped. But... Maybe we can figure out its secrets. Secrets, nonetheless. There we go. It was just the heat sink compound. So we've got this very... I mean, it's a little flexible, but it's quite tough little chassis. It says titanium on it. And there's the part number for all you Intel fanboys if there are any of this generation. The titanium was a complete failure, like I was saying. It's only in a very small portion of uh, the server market. Now, we've got this heavy block with a pip. It's open. It must have had thermal uh, phase change material in it. It was essentially like a heat pipe. Let me see if... 
Nope. But this has quite a bit of weight to it, so it, it must be a, just a really solid core. Or, or sorry, not a solid core, but a, a solid plate with a hollow piece with a phase change material or liquid in it. And it's been like tacked on on the sides. Here is the chip, and I believe this is the cache. I don't know how... Well, this is quite firm, this stuff. So I have to scrape it off. Hang on. Well, that is a huge die. I mean, <laughs> that is up there. That's, man, that's just massive. Now, it looks like they've actually soldered through this PCB. This is probably just to align all the pins. So, in theory, you could probably desolder all of this, take this uh, small uh, like alignment board out, and remove the chip. Maybe I'll try that. I mean, of course, if I'm doing it, I'll do it with a heat gun and just try and take the whole thing off. Now, these BGA chips may just come... Oh, you know what? This is BGA as well. This is actually a BGA. So it's converting the BGA uh, packages into pins. Hmm. Well, maybe one day I'll try and get this off and get me a chip. I mean, this one's kind of scraped up because I took it off real quick. I would use uh, alcohol, let it sit, and let it soak into it to really loosen it because this stuff's quite firm like it's really solid that's why it was so hard to get the heat sink off and they obviously have space for more unless they're just loading it to keep the board uh, fairly well balanced it has an edge connector with very few co actual connections these are all stitched together so this is probably just power or something fur on it interesting Never seen a nitanium, and now I have nine more. Uh, yay. Despite all the drilling, he has gotten himself kind of comfortable in there. Moose, how you doing in there? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but Moose is actually very, very large. I mean, he's big. Very big. Right? Over 20 pounds. Before I get into what came in the uh, SMD thing, which was the third auction that I won from this guy, I'll just show you what I was doing with the other ones. I made a big list of all the ca or capacitors, resistors, that kind of stuff. And basically, I went through, got one of everything, one reel of everything, and then just took a bit, put in a static proof bag. I got these from DigiKey. And yeah, just crudely labeled it, and I will have a whole bunch of useless value resistors for uh, the once in a lifetime that I need that particular value. And I took all the rest, well not all the rest, but a lot of it, and added to my big soup of SMD parts. So this is coming along nicely, and maybe one day I will just pour epoxy into this thing and just call it finished. But... Uh, yeah, I did manage to smooth off the edges of my coaster that I made. Although I do need to buff them and sand them to make them nice and shiny again. They're all scuffed up right now. But I got rid of the sharp edges, so it actually turned out quite nice. And I've been using it. <laughs> One thing I've noticed is I think hot beverages tend to stick to the epoxy. I don't know if they start to break it down and melt it a bit, but... It doesn't seem too heat stable because it seems like every time I put my lovely tea on my coaster, it tries to stick to it. But who knows? I could just be some kind of residue on it or something. Anyway, let's get to all the SMD stuff. Unlike the previous auction, this one came with a lot of reels, but it also came with lots of just odds and ends, like these static bags and a whole bag of other little bits and pieces. There's a tray, which I can... Uh, we'll get into that. Uh, and there's like a bag of screws. Two bags of screws, actually. And I think that's it for it. But this one certainly had a wider array of stuff. And I've already looked at a couple things. I haven't spoiled it completely because I want to share in the 
I want you to share in the disappointment as I go through these in real time as it happens because I've looked at a couple of them and yeah it's kind of bizarre but anyway uh, these do look like they're different things and I've already discovered that this is actually a um, an in, a Lucent Actel build so this was obviously from a, a you know a manufacturing house and these were all the spare parts from it but uh, there's stuff that's clearly labeled Lucent on it. I don't know if this one is. I just picked a random one. But there's stuff that's been labeled Lucent. And this is some kind of, I would say, based on what I've seen, it's probably some kind of enterprise networking device. Because in here we've got some uh, little BGA PCI set chips, which are... Um, you know, they're like old uh, Southbridge controllers and stuff, so they come in a nice little foam box. Protective pack. Eh. These are kind of cool, but they take up a lot of space. If it's something that, you know, was a lot smaller, I may use it for my own storage. Anyway, let's get to the reels, because the reels can go, we can get through those pretty quickly. Uh, 10 ohm. 150 ohm. These are all looking like they're one percent again. And these are 0603 97.6. Uh, one thing I like is these all seem to be, for the most part, different values from the ones I have already. So that's good. 182 ohm. We've got 182 ohm. These are interesting reels. I haven't seen these before. From Vichy. And this is probably a 1.74K ohm. 60.4K. 1.5 mega ohm. I think that's probably the biggest one so far. Now these are large resistors. These are like 1210 or something. Yep, 1210. 200 ohm, one quarter watt. You can see they're much larger than, say, these guys. <laughs> These ones are 221 ohm, and I think they're 0603. Yeah, 0603. And 10 ohm, 10 ohm. 35.7K, 510K, 2.2K. 10 again? 10 ohm. A lot of 10 ohm ones. 71.5 ohm. We've got 150 ohm. 10 ohm again. There's a lot of 10 ohm ones. 1K. That's probably the only normal value I've seen so far. Uh, 90.9, I think. It's hard to tell. It's a little messed up. And 100 ohm, 232 ohm. Oh, another this is another big 1210 one. We've got 5.1 ohm. Something oh 56 picofarad, 18 picofarad. Those are good. Oh, those are probably. Uh, at least 18 picofarad ones are probably for what's coming up, which is a million clock crystals. And 1.5K. Dale resistor. Oh, 1K. At least this batch has some normal values. And this is 1.5 mega ohm. Ooh, black reel. What are these? 100 ohm, 1210. At least these will look good in the next coaster. These are zero ohm? Yeah, there's zero ohm 1210. Bizarre. Alright, I guess those are almost useful. Jumpers. 4.02k ohm. 240, 274 ohm. We've got 49.9 ohm. 
4.75K, I think. These are 51.1 ohm, 5.6K, I think. Yeah, 5.6K. And the last ones, we've got 25.5 ohm, 100 ohm again. There's a lot of 100 ohm ones in this thing. I don't know what they're using those for. Probably uh, 13K ohm. Probably some kind of circuit protection. Uh, 7.5K. And lastly, 150K ohm. And these are uh, 0603s as well. So, let's get to the more interesting stuff. I'd like to point out that I'm using the term more interesting stuff very loosely. So this is some kind of part from what I can see, it is some diodes, or they are diodes. Yeah, they look very diode-like. Oh well, since I can't really figure out what part they are, they're definitely going into the SMD pile. We've got from DigiKey, 82.5 ohm, 0603s. Oh, same thing. And here, more interesting one. Huge reel. Well, not a reel. I mean, it's just loose tape. But this is a huge, huge, huge thing of these uh, oscillators. Now, on the thing, I can't. There's a part number, but it doesn't look like it's a full part number. This is oscillator and. It might be 33 megahertz. Let me see. Yeah, 33 megahertz. I don't know how common that is. I don't think it's very common. So uh, I'll probably put a bunch in here, and maybe I'll poke around on eBay and see if uh, see if anyone can use them. Maybe I can resell this, but I doubt it. Again, it's like one of those values that it's probably useless. But that is a lot of oscillators. That's crazy. And we've got more. These have 800 stickers on them, none of which tell you anything. These are uh, these are actually ICs. Oh, interesting. These are. ICS and the part number is CA 3743B. Hang on, let me look that up. I couldn't find any information on these until I looked up the other part number on it, which is the MK2069. It's a voltage controlled crystal oscillator based clock generator that offers system synchronization, jitter attenuation, and frequency translation. Basically useless to me, but maybe useful to someone There's quite a few of them on here well, only up to here where they're missing yeah that's pretty much a full thing some of them fell out they will go into the SMD pile now we've got this big waffle tray now <laughs> at first glance it's like okay cool there's gonna be some kind of chip in here yeah well you can see right through that there's really only like two chips in here so Yay, disappointment. Now the conspiracy guy in me wants to say that this this uh, seller intentionally takes blurry pictures of everything just so that you buy them and you don't realize that you're not getting a full tray. But I do understand that they would only have a certain number of them left at the end of a production run. I just, uh, you know, it's just kind of silly that you're, you know, you're buying it and you have no idea and then you get it and it's just like, oh look, there's four chips. So, these are probably the same PCI set chips that are from the little static proof transport container. These are BGAs. I can see the, the balls on the BGAs, or the pads for the balls. There's like literally like one or two chips in here. Okay, here we go. One chip. 
And it's, oh, well, it's Xilinx. It's a Xilinx Spartan something or other. XC25200. FPGA. Okay, well, that was certainly worth shipping in this. Alright, finishing out what was in that big bag of bags, we've got some 11.184 megahertz through hole oscillators. Some 100 watt, or sorry, 100 ohm quarter watt, oh, 2010 resistors from DigiKey. I don't mind the, the larger resistors, they're at least somewhat useful. Ooh, inductors, one micro Henry. Just says doesn't say the size. I guess they're um, there might be their own custom size as inductors often are. Ten percent. Also from DigiKey. I can always look up the part number. I like it when stuff comes in DigiKey bags. So these are all the same. Inductors are always good. I don't have too many inductors. And two hundred ohm. Oh six oh three. Nothing special. Ooh, green LEDs. Twelve oh six. They look somewhat standard. 40.2 ohm, 8.25k ohm resistors, S, ooh, account S. Brady, these are 10 picofarad 25 volt MPO caps, 0603, these are all stapled together so they're probably all the same, 4.02k 4 ohm, and yeah, they're all the same. 7.5K. Something. Who knows what this is. Yeah, that's a whole lot of useful. Wow, <laughs> a memory stick. <laughs> oh, no, wait. This, this, I don't think this is memory. Or, like, RAM. I think this is actually... Uh, this is a weird format. PC64... I guess this is just a, a DDR2 DIMM that's just a low profile for a, a laptop. Huh. I don't recognize this form factor. It seems wider than a regular so DIMM. Weird. Why did my battery jump from 20 minutes remaining down to 4? Oh well, better hurry up. Must go faster. This is apparently nothing. Oh, is this? Yeah, I think that's what the, the memory came out of. Some more vaguely named parts. They look like 0603s or maybe even smaller. These are some ICs, I believe. I know one of these has some Atmel EPROMs in it. At least I think that's what they were. These are dual differential multi tip. These are probably for, um, hmm, not sure. These might be some kind of drive. Oh, it's just one chip. It looks like they're probably either like a differential pair driver or some kind of something relating to uh, like driving all the clock signals that are apparently on this board because there's 800 freaking clock crystals on it. This has a tube. Oh, I think this is the Atmel one. See, this says uh, Actel Lucent on it. Integrated device. Yeah, I think I think this is the one I can see, and it's like ten um, just standard EEPROMs or EEPROMs, I should say. This one, I'm not sure. Small chips. It doesn't say. Weird. I switched batteries back. I have two batteries for my camera. I switched to this one, which I had charging for like two minutes, and it's saying there's 86 minutes remaining, even though it was saying two minutes before. Maybe somehow the battery cal calibration's gone all wonky on this. Anyway, uh, let's just get through the last things real quick. We've got some 56.2 ohm resistors. This tray of 80 megahertz crystals. 
Looks like it's a full tray. There are a lot of them tucked back there. And some se separate uh, crystals, all 80 megahertz from Mouser instead of DigiKey. Does it say how many are in here? Quantity something. And these are just the remaining chips. They all look like weird ass like clock generators and stuff. I won't bother looking up the part numbers really. But I did like this one a lot more than the other lot. I mean at least it had some cool ICs and stuff to add to the pile and possibly resell. I like these ones a lot more than just the plain old resistors. These are like treasure hunting when it's all these weird ICs and stuff. So I guess maybe in the future if the guy has some more ones that have like weird looking parts and not just reels. Maybe I'll pick up another one someday.